Hi, I'm Kirsty Richardson. I work for Classic Collection Holidays on the Long Haul Department. Um, I'm an Africa specialist and today I'm going to be talking to you about South Africa. To get to South Africa, you've got the option of direct flights with British Airways either into Cape Town or Johannesburg, or you can use the Middle Eastern carriers like Qatar, Etihad or Emirates to get you into Cape Town or Johannesburg once again. So Cape Town is my favourite city in the whole world. It's a magical, magical place with Table Mountain as the backdrop. There's some amazing hotels. Uh, it's split into areas. So you've got the Victoria and the Alfred waterfront where there's lots of restaurants and bars and you can sit and watch the world go by whilst enjoying a lovely glass of Cape wine and some fantastic cuisine, which is great value for money in comparison to the prices we spend on food here. You could also stay out at one of Cape Town beaches, like Camps Bay is beautiful and got a great buzzing atmosphere as well. There's so many things you can do and see in and around Cape Town. The Red Route Hop On Hop Off bus is a great introduction. Everybody needs to go and, and visit Table Mountain, but you do have to be aware that if it's windy or foggy, the cable car will close. So watch it. You can see the cable car from wherever you are in Cape Town. When you see it's operating, get yourself over and get yourself up on that mountain. The cable car is an amazing experience in itself. Or if you're feeling adventurous and energetic, you can climb it. It only takes two and a half hours. When I went, it was quite windy and the cable car was shut. So I climbed it myself. And when we got to the top, there was nobody else there. So we sat and had a picnic and it was wonderful weather. Also nearby Cape Town, you can go and do some wonderful excursions. You can go across to Robin Island or Cape Point and Peninsula, where you get to see the lovely penguins on Boulders Beach. And also you get to see rock hyraxes, which the locals call dassies. Um, they hang out there as well, but they, they don't get the publicity. Uh, it's a, a wonderful excursion, a great day out. Also nearby Cape Town, you've got the, the Cape Winelands. You can go to Stellenbosch, Paul, or Franchhoek. Franchhoek, I think, is the prettiest. Um, it's the smallest. It feels almost like a village, even though it's more of a town. The scenery around there is spectacular with hills and valleys and all the vineyards and you can have a fun, fun day out on the, the Franchuk wine tram um, which goes round a whole different selection of the vineyards and there's not much more fun to be had. In Cape Town you've got a huge selection of hotels and you've got the big chain brands but there's some really interesting properties um, that are, are glorious um, and some very, very luxurious properties. You have the silo, which is super expensive, super luxurious. But you've also got places like the one and only, which aren't quite so expensive, but glorious in their own right as well. Very trendy rooms, great location, and the bar in the one and only has panoramic windows, which frame the entire landscape around Table Mountain. So it's a lovely place to while away some time. There's some really sweet boutique properties out in Camps Bay, places like Azamair and the Mali, which are tiny, tiny, very chic, trendy properties. So there is something there for everybody. I really love the variety, and each time I go back, I try and stay somewhere different. Twelve Apostles is also lovely, which is outside of Camps Bay. Very luxurious and quite a hip place to go and sit and watch the sun go down with a nice glass of white. Moving on to the wine lands, you could go for the uber luxurious Mont Rochel, but there are also a lot of other lovely places. Franchet Country House is a great four to four and a half star. Really good prices as well. Once you get outside of Cape Town, the prices are very, very reasonable. It's a really good thing to do a self-drive from Cape Town you can go up to the winelands within about an hour, an hour and a half's drive. Driving in South Africa is easy because it's on the same side of the road that we drive on. 
so it's a really good thing to do and it means you can do it at your own pace and stop when you see something amazing and beautiful because the scenery is just breathtaking. From the winelands you can drive down to Hermanus. If it's from July to December you've got whale watching there and there's lots of lovely properties down there as well. One of my favourites is a tiny little boutique place called Mosselberg on Grotto Bay which is really very chic and very groovy and just a lovely place to stay, very different to the big chain hotels. On from there, you can move further east to Oatshorn, which is where you get the ostrich farms and the Kango Caves. They're really worth a visit. And then further along from there, you can go to either Neisner or Plettenberg, and it's worth a good few days staying there, at least two nights. If you've got the time, then three is even better. The beaches at Plettenberg are beautiful, and you can go to Sitsikama from there. There's so much that you can do or see around that area. And once again, stunning scenery, great cuisine, great wine. Moving on from there, the obvious ending to your South Africa journey would be a safari in the Eastern Cape. There's lots of lovely places you can go, mostly private game reserves in that part of the country. Pumba is one of my favourites. All the rooms have plunge pools. Pumba Bush Lodge is lovely. It gets great reviews and lots of people go back there time after time. It's a great four and a half star property. Safariing in South Africa is amazing and there's lots of different areas you can do the safaris. The Eastern Cape works really well with the garden route combined with Cape Town as it flows lovely in a west to easterly direction. Other places you can go on safari which we can twin with Cape Town and the Winelands and even the garden route if you wish. You can go up to Kruger, the private game reserves that circle the outside border of the main national park where we would recommend. I personally love the Timbavati because it's big wide open spaces. They've dropped their fences with Kruger so the game free roams in and around. It can come in and out of Kruger and across into Timbavati. Yeah just a feeling of wide open spaces and big African blue skies and who knows what's around the next corner. Is it a herd of elephant? Is it a lion? I was lucky enough to experience all of these creatures out there. We did see the big five, which was just amazing. Other areas, the Selby Sands is a real um, stronghold for leopard. If leopard is something that you would love to see on safari, then Selby Sands is the place for you to go. We were literally tripping over them when we were doing our game drives there. And we went off season, so the weather wasn't brilliant but there was still plenty of leopard out to be seen, which is such a treat. They're so difficult to see generally in any area of Africa because they're such shy, elusive cats. But no big five you will see in, in Kruger, no problem at all, or you'll be very unlucky not to see them. Other areas you can go to, you can go further north to Medikwe, which is reached going through Johannesburg and you can take a road transfer which takes approximately four hours each way. The good thing about the safari lodges in Medikwe and in the Eastern Cape is they are A, malaria free and B, very family friendly. So if you've got a family wanting to travel with, with younger children, we wouldn't recommend children go on safari really any younger than seven years old. But if they're seven or above, then the Eastern Cape and Medikwe would be where we would advise they travel to. If you're traveling to Kruger, then you do need to look at anti-malaria protection. During your stay in Cape Town, we would recommend for a first time visit, anything between three and six nights. The longer you can spend, the better, because it really is a magical city. Most people want to visit uh, Robin Island and Table Mountain. They're your first go-to. But there's some other places you can visit. You can take an excursion round to Bluebergs Rand, which is where you get the stunning photo of Table Mountain, but with the ocean in front of you. It's a beautiful place to go and visit and get some fantastic photographs. Another thing that uh, you can twin with South Africa, it works really well. Any of the itineraries, if you end up in Johannesburg, 
with just one overnight at an airport hotel, then we can take you across to Mauritius, so you can have your beach stay, um, or the Seychelles as well. There's direct flights to both those places. And uh, with Mauritius, we can then fly you directly back to the UK. With the Seychelles, we would have to route you through the Middle East. And they're both great beach destinations. Mauritius, very family friendly and very reasonably priced. Seychelles, much better for a honeymoon, very romantic beach destination and one of the most beautiful beach destinations I've ever been to. It, it truly is paradise on earth. So for all of your inquiries, contact us here at Classic Collection where we'll be happy to put together your itineraries. We can tailor make them to suit your, your price range and your requirements to make your perfect dream holiday.